Are you experiencing complete burnout, adrenal fatigue, a nervous system crash, not only from your anxiety disorder, but from the process of trying to heal anxiety? If you answered yes, my friends, today's video is going to speak to you deeply because we're going to talk about certain symptoms when it comes to burnout. We're going to talk about some key mindsets to healing, and we're going to talk about what you need to do, what you need to focus on in order to move beyond this burnout. Now, just from personal experience, burnout is something that a lot of people don't understand. And it can feel normal after a while to go about life this way. It almost seems like, oh, I, I feel tired, right, after something that I did. But underlying that tiredness, your body is screaming for certain specific things that currently you're not giving back to it. So today we're going to focus on this, my friends. I want you to see if you can relate to some of these symptoms of burnout, okay? One is involuntary muscle tension. When it comes to involuntary muscle tension, it's like you've got this feeling where your legs are extremely tight, for example, and you're not really sure what caused the tightness because consciously there's no particular reason to have anxiety or to fear anything. But there is an underlying involuntary process going on that is creating the tension in your muscles. Therefore, later on, you notice and you go, my God, this is tight and that's tight. So that's one of the symptoms of this burnout. Internal vibrations, trembling, and often muscle twitching. You're kind of going, oh my God, I got this muscle twitching going on. Could it be ALS? Could it be MS? Next thing you know, you go down the rabbit hole of search engines and Google, and you find, of course, the worst possible answers on there. And you've also got this feeling of internal vibration. It's almost like there's this constant trembling going on that you don't really have control over, but it's really bothering you. This is another sign of the burnout that we're talking about today. Joint aches or popping. Okay, so you're walking down the stairs and your ankles are going pop, pop, pop. And, and you're like, I'm not that old. It's not like I'm 90, but you feel like you're 90, right? You feel really old. Um, and you've got this achy feeling all the time in your lower back and your, your, your knees and your ankles and your arms. And so all of this achiness and popping of your joints can be caused by the burnout that you're experiencing, my friends. Very low attention span. So someone begins talking and you're going, oh, oh whoa, what, what's that over there? Right? It's like, yes, human beings already have a very low attention span, but when you're experiencing this nervous system burnout, then what happens is you really, you really have to understand that it's not like there's something wrong with you or you're not, it's not like you're getting irritated all the time and you're going crazy or something is bad about you. It's just the fact that the burnout is looking to protect the energy reserves that you have left over because you don't have a lot of energy reserves to give to conversations, to give to exercising, to give to movies, to give to certain things, whereas other people can easily go about those things, right? But in your case, it's different. Uh, hypersensitivity to all external interactions. So you're avoiding people, you're avoiding, you know, calling them, you're avoiding meeting people in groups or one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, let's go for a tea this morning. And then all of a sudden your mind starts to wander to all the, the difficulties of the conversation. So you're very hypersensitive to these sorts of interactions, right? Chronic f fatigue and tiredness from simple acts. You walk up the stairs and you're winded. You're going, well, I'm not that out of shape, right? And you start to question your physical health. Is there something wrong with me? And you get every test done under the sun. The tests come back, pretty much everything is negative. And again, this creates a rabbit hole. You go down the rabbit hole and next thing you know, you find yourself in places that 
you know, you're looking back in the morning going, I didn't even think I'd be there tonight. What, are, what am I doing here talking about all these diseases and illnesses and such? So these are just some of the symptoms of burnout, okay? And what we need to understand with burnout is that we need to be very, very gentle towards our minds, our bodies, and our spirits, more so our lower selves. I'm talking about your less than conscious mind, your subconscious mind, your inner child. So the mindset is this, you go lower self, okay, and you're talking to that deeper part of you that is looking to protect at every turn, right? Lower self, you recover at the time and speed that you are comfortable with. Now, what a beautiful mindset to have. Instead of forcing these symptoms away or forcing this pattern or habit, physiological, psychological, emotional habits away, you're going, hey, you take all the time you need and you recover at the right time and speed that you believe is right for us. Now, this will take a lot of the pressure off of you. And often the anxiety starts to subside with this kind of a mindset. Comment below if in fact you've been having this more gentle approach towards your burnout and anxiety healing. Now, let's talk about some of the rules that you need to make sure that you, you understand and start applying into your life because this made some massive changes not only in my life but people that I work with through my programs, okay? Rule number one, I'm not going to go through numbers, but just these are the, the rules in, in no particular order. Mindfully be present with your five senses more often. What that means is in this very moment, what can you really see? What can you really hear? What can you really feel? What can you really smell? What can you really taste? So you're consciously making those decisions rather than allowing your lower self or inner child to decide for you. So even if you are completely present for just a few seconds or a few minutes, that allows you to leave more energy in your reserves for any kind of uh, mental equations or problem solving that you do later on or any kind of physical walk that you do later on or interactions or job or whatever you have to do. Because the most important thing right now is to preserve your energy. Okay, you've been giving it away for so long and you've been caught up in doership, which is kind of like a, a feeling of fighting through life and feeling like you have to struggle to attain some kind of a reward. This is doership, just a few elements of it. But there's been this push, push, push and this, uh, this doership attitude towards life. And it's really been backfiring on you physiologically and psychologically to the point of burnout and you know, creating anxiety disorders. So being present, very, very key. The second thing is try not to be engaged in the fluctuation of temperatures too much. So too cold, too hot. Don't take those freezing cold baths. I know that they're very, very beneficial for the nervous system, but during burnout, be aware. So too cold, too hot, saunas, that sort of thing. Stay away from that and try to make sure that you are going through your day at mild temperatures. The next rule to pay attention to is no strenuous exercising, okay? Heavy weights, getting to the gym, pushing yourself through biking or running or this sort of thing. You're just gonna hold yourself back from healing, okay? Healing the burnout, healing the anxiety disorder. So walks are okay, walks are okay, but you wanna make sure that you're walking slowly, not at a frantic pace. You're not walking away from your problems. You're not running away from your problems. So pay attention to the, the, the strenuous exercising and slow that down. Another rule is to, for the time being, distance yourself from highly emotional people. So people that are very, very excited or very, very down on themselves, just take time to distance yourself from these people for the time being. Um, if you have to explain yourself to them, just go ahead and do that. Make sure that they don't take anything too personal. This is about your burnout healing, your anxiety disorder healing, and it has nothing to do with them. But at the moment, any kind of, um, any, any kind of high level of emotion that, that 
creates this deeper sense of hypersensitivity within you where you start to create muscle tension and things are getting tense and things are getting rigid and now you're trying to protect yourself. Anything like that you want to stay away from. Remember, right now, we really need to listen to our bodies and our bodies more so need certain things and we have to focus on certain things. So those are some of the things that you want to pay attention to. And here are some of the things that you want to focus on. The first one is holy basil. This is a supplement that, a herb that really worked for me to calm my nervous system down. So holy basil can be taken in the morning as well as at night, okay, but preferably just at night prior to sleep because sleep is one of those things where if you've got sleep debt, then it's very difficult to heal your burnout and, of course, your anxiety disorder. You know that already. So holy basil will help. Are you currently taking holy basil? How is it working for you? Comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, as I mentioned, sleep length and quality right now. The most important thing for you is sleep. Okay, And that doesn't mean just at night. Throughout the afternoon, if you've got the opportunity to take a 20-minute nap, please do that. Because we're trying to give back rather than take from. Okay, we don't want to take more from pushing our knees, you know, harder in that uh, intense workout or that sport that we love so very much. You're going to notice during this time period that some of the things that you really love doing, you're going to have to refrain from doing from a certain time, a certain period of time, and move yourself towards things that feel kind of boring at the beginning. But the truth is, is these are the things that you need to do to give back to your mind, give back to your body, to heal from burnout, to heal from an anxiety disorder. Because with healing an anxiety disorder, people make the mistake of trying to add more to their healing journey rather than subtracting from. The next thing to pay attention to is eating regularly. When you've got this blood sugar fluctuation, it's actually a stressor for the body. So you want to make sure that you, you, don't, you don't worry about the six-pack right now. Don't worry about what your body looks like or what kind of shape you're in. Just focus your attention on healing the burnout because it, over time, you're going to go back to those things that you're kind of giving up for, the, for a temporary time right now. So, so please understand that, you know, this, uh, put all that stuff aside, all the physical stuff aside. How do I look? Am I getting in better shape? And, and focus more so on uh, eating regularly, of course, eating cleanly, okay? Uh, I personally love, if you're going to eat fruits, eat fruits in the morning. I love quinoa. I love lentils, beans. These sorts of things are great for giving back to our nervous system, our minds, our bodies. Uh, so you want to do your own research and make sure that you're eating clean and often. Keyword often throughout the day. Restful activities. Now you may think that watching a romantic movie or an action-packed movie is actually rest. It's not. Okay, neither are video games that are hyper stimulating. Even calming video games can sometimes be a hit to the nervous system, make you work harder than you really need to in that moment. You need to make sure that you do things like Epsom salt baths. Uh, spend time in silence because the world is very, very loud. Uh, restful activities. Give back to your nervous system that's been working so hard for you throughout all these years, and you've been pushing it knowingly and unknowingly, pushing it to its limits. So now's the time to reel it back and do those restful activities. And in the description, I'll definitely point out a few extra ones, my friends. And finally, nature time. Spend time in nature because when you're connected to nature, there's this not only physical help or emotional help, mental help, there's also a spiritual help. And what tends to happen around nature is we tend to download more wisdom, download more information, information that will not only heal us for our burnout and our anxiety disorder, but to take us places we never thought we would go, right? And that means internally and externally. So spending time in nature is kind of this reconnection between your divine self, your true self, your higher self, and the naturistic environment, okay? So that's very, very important. But are you experiencing burnout right now in 
coordination with your anxiety disorder. If you are, I want you to comment below and tell me a little bit about it because I love connecting with people and understanding where they are in the nervous system burnout process and the anxiety disorder process because that really helps me make more content and to reach out to you guys in a helpful way. So comment below on those. If you have any questions on any of my anxiety recovery programs, head over here. And my friends, remember that you and the fly are more than anxiety. I love you all so very much. Have a progress-filled day because you deserve it. See you soon. Thank you.